Welcome to Threat Vector, a segment where Unit 42 shares unique threat intelligence insights, new threat actor TTPs, and real world case studies. Unit 42 has a global team of threat intelligence experts, incident responders, and proactive security consultants dedicated to safeguarding our digital world. I'm your host, David Moulton, Director of Thought Leadership for Unit 42. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking with Kate Nonheim about the new SEC rules. Kate is a Cyber Risk Management Director at Unit 42 with over 15 years experience in technology solutions delivery and a decade of expertise in cybersecurity. The information provided on this podcast is not intended to constitute legal advice. All information presented is for general informational purposes only. The information contained may not constitute the most update legal or interpretive compliance guidance. Contact your own attorney to obtain advice with respect to any particular legal matter. Kate, thanks for joining me today on Threat Vector. I want to start us off with a really simple question. What is the SEC? I'm really glad you started there, David. So the SEC is essentially the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, which is an independent agency that was established in 1934, really after the stock market crash of 1929 and the resulting Great Depression. It oversees multiple functions related to the securities market. So things like enforcement of laws, regulation, registration of securities, reporting, investor protection, and rulemaking. The agency helps create a level playing field and ensures transparency and protects the interests of investors. What are SEC rules, Kate? Yes. So SEC final rules are legally binding regulations released to enforce securities laws. Can you explain the rationale between the SEC's decision to introduce cyber regulations at this time? The SEC chair, Gary Gensler, said that currently many public companies provide cybersecurity disclosure to investors, but he said, I think companies and investors alike would benefit if this disclosure were made in a more consistent, comparable, and decision-useful way through helping to ensure that companies disclose material cybersecurity information How will these regulations affect reporting and disclosure requirements for publicly traded companies? Yeah, so there's several requirements for publicly traded companies. The first is that the new Form 8K Item 1.05 will require registrants to disclose any cybersecurity incident they determine to be material and describe the material aspects of the nature, scope, and timing of the incident, as well as the material impact or reasonably likely material impact of the incident on the registrant. Uh, This really must be done within four business days of determining that an incident is material. There will be another requirement through new regulation SK item 106, which will require registrants to describe their processes, if any, for assessing, identifying, managing material risks from cybersecurity threats, as well as whether any risks from cybersecurity threats, including as a result of any previous cybersecurity incidents, have material affected or are reasonably likely to material affect the registrant. And then Form 6K will be amended to require foreign private issuers to furnish information on material cybersecurity incidents that they make or are required to make public or otherwise disclose in a foreign jurisdiction to any stock exchange or to security holders. Are there specific industries or sectors that will be more heavily affected by these regulations? Why is that? Yes, David. So there are definitely industries that will be impacted more greatly by the final rule. Any industries that have high numbers of cybersecurity incidents will be more heavily affected. Those are things like publicly traded companies and industries like manufacturing, finance, professional services, healthcare services, energy, and utilities. And then any publicly traded companies and industries that are not highly regulated or subject to compliance requirements may also be affected because those industries will have to scramble to develop their cyber risk management programs quickly. What steps should organizations take to ensure compliance with the new cyber regulations? And what are the potential consequences of noncompliance? For many publicly traded companies, they'll have to start reporting in December material cybersecurity incidents. So organizations should first devote resources to identifying a playbook for how this is done. Because cobbling together the appropriate procedures from separate policies and groups is going to be prohibitive if an incident does occur. Uh, Following this organization subject to the rules should immediately perform a gap assessment against the new requirements to understand uh, where they fall, either through a self-assessment or independent assessment. And then when they've identified those gaps, they need to implement corrective actions through a workflow system 
and set due dates so the remediations are really completed in a timely manner. These corrective actions are likely going to include changes to policy and procedures, process creation, materiality analysis processes, and SEC reporting processes. And then once the remediations are complete, the company should perform a reassessment to make sure they've closed all the gaps. How do these regulations align with existing cybersecurity standards or frameworks such as NIST or ISO? The new regulations align well with the frameworks at a high level in that both NIST and ISO require risk management programs are in place. For example, NIST maintains the NIST RMF or risk management framework, and that's a comprehensive approach to risk management. But NIST also maintains Special Publication 853, Revision 5, which is Security and Privacy Controls for Information Systems and Organizations. ISO 27001 and 27002 also have nods to risk management, such as requirements for information security risk assessments and treatments, as well as general risk management requirements. Kate, looking ahead, what trends or developments in cybersecurity regulation should we be watching out for in the near future? I'm really interested to see what comes of the push for harmonization of cybersecurity frameworks. Due to an increasingly crowded field of laws and regulations with respect to cybersecurity standards, on July 19, 2023, the Office of the National Cyber Director, or ONCD, released a request for information, or RFI, asking for public comment on opportunities for and challenges to harmonizing federal cybersecurity regulations. An effort to harmonize competing requirements and assessments is long overdue. So this focus has the potential to be really beneficial. I'm very interested to see what comes along with that. And this SEC rule is just one of a number of efforts in the U.S. and around the globe where policymakers are expecting to do more on their cybersecurity posture. Many of these recent regulatory efforts and proposals focus on two similar buckets, cyber incident reporting and cyber risk management plan. Hey, thanks for joining me today on Threat Vector. This conversation has been a great reminder of how integral security has become for every organization. If you're interested in going deeper on this topic, join the Unit 42 experts on November 9th for a webinar on the proposed SEC rules. A link will be in the show notes. The title of that webinar is The Ransomware Landscape, Threats Driving the SEC Rule and Other Regulations. We'll be back on the CyberWire in two weeks. In the meantime, stay secure, stay vigilant. Goodbye for now.